Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video of IT Best Practices YouTube channel. Today, I want to show you how to use Nmap to detect ports and services on other hosts in your network. Let me uh, give you a little bit of a background of my test environment here. I have a um, Kali Linux computer running Apache. Uh, then I have a um, Windows 10 computer running FileZilla FTP server. And those are going to be my two um, test devices. And I'm going to be running the scans from my Windows 10 computer, but it could be any computer using a current version of Nmap. So why would you like to do this first of all? The reason why you would like to identify uh, ports and services running in a system is because each application is going to use specific port to service the uh, clients connecting to it, right? We, we have the well-known ports, for instance, port 80, which is HTTP. We have port 21 for FTP, uh, port 53 for DNS, so on and so forth. And when you come on board and you take over a network, you would like to know what ports are open and what ports are available in your network because it may be that you have some devices that are uh, broadcasting or that they do have open ports when they shouldn't have those open ports. And from the uh, cybersecurity point of view, that is a vulnerability. There's no reason for you to have, uh, for instance, uh, port 21 FTP open if you don't have an FTP server, right? So th that is one of the main reasons why you would like to identify uh, the applications, uh, the ports and the services, I would say. The other thing you would like to know the, uh, the uh, service is because, as you can imagine, there are known vulnerabilities that affect specific applications, right? Like there are versions of, S of FTP that are vulnerable. There are versions of, of Apache, of IIS that have known vulnerabilities. And it would be great for you as a network administrator or, or security engineer to identify those hosts in your network I record that information and then determine if the uh, services you're running are vulnerable. Now, if you have commercial tools, they're going to do that for you, right? But if you don't have commercial tools in place, then you have to run Nmap and you have to do a little bit of lead work to come up with that information, but it's doable. And again, it is a best practice. So now that you know that I have these two um, computers with um, those applications running, uh, it's super simple. What you have to do is just open up your computer, whatever um, operating system you're using. If you have if you have Nmap um, installed, it's fine. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna type the Nmap command. Of course, you're gonna start with that, and you do minus s minus v, and you can run this on one individual host or you can run this in a segment, or you can run this in an IP range. It's up to you. In my case, because I wanna do this fast, I'm gonna concentrate on one specific host, right? So I'm gonna do um, my, the computer running uh, FTP, the Windows 10 computer, what's the IP address for that is, I believe is 160. So I do nmap detect services, which is minus S capital V and the IP address 172.16.5.160. I hit enter. And that's gonna do what it does, right? It's take about maybe a couple of seconds for the command to run, but I'm gonna post the video here. And I'm, okay, I, I paused the video because it took about a minute for the command to run. So as you can see here, uh, the command to identify the ports and services. Um, 
Keep this in mind by identifying ports and services. It means open ports and services. It's not going to show you the closed ports, right? There's no, there's no reason for that. Uh, as you can see here, I have um, it identified 21 as open, 135, 139, blah, blah, blah. And it tried to identify the service version here, right? Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm going to run this command on the um, against my uh, Kali Linux using um, HTTP and that's gonna be I forget the IP address of this device let me come here this is 153 so let me go back I'm gonna run the command I'm gonna pause the video so you don't wait here for no reason then i start it again when the result is done okay this was faster so as you can see here um it identified it ran the scan that it identified that i'm running uh, simple http server 0.6 right on port 8000 so the other thing you have to keep in mind is this when you run um when you run these commands you're not always going to get the results that you expect. For instance, uh, HTTP works by default on port 80, right? On that, what is known as the well-known port, port 80. But you can configure uh, HTTP to run on any port you, you would like. As you can see here, we're using port 8000. It could be anything else. So that's why it is important not only to do a uh, port scan but also a service scan because if i do a port scan right if i come here and i said let me see if port 80 is enabled or open on this host because i believe it's running http as you can see it's going to tell me that the port is closed and then i said you know what what about port 8000 let's say that you know you, you get lucky guessing the, um, the the number or you run an application you only do a port scan and it's going to come up with port 8000 it's going to tell you that it's open right but it doesn't tell you much about the application itself that's why it is a good practice to also do the port and the service that is run that, that is running on that port so you can get an understanding of the application uh, to be honest with you I if if I have time and if depending on the type of scanning I'm doing, you can also do something like a minus capital A. It's going to be a more exhaustive type of scan um, in the network and it's going to give you the, um, the operating system, the ports and services all in one screen. So that's one of the great um, one of the great things that you could do with Nmap. Of course, you can do a lot of more things other than this, but I believe that understanding the ports and services running in your network is at an is an IT best practice that is going to help you take the necessary measures and apply the right technologies to protect your network. And as always. Um, it is a best practice to run your network in a uh, least privilege mode, meaning this only allowed what is necessary to perform the required action. If you have a server that is that is running or that it has many um, ports open, just close those that are not required for the server to perform its function, right? If you're using, uh, for instance, if you have an, an HTTP server running on port 80, there's no reason. If it's not doing FTP, there's no reason to have 21 open. But you get the point. So I hope that this video was useful to you. Remember, uh, with Nmap, you can do a lot of things. And to um, identify ports and services, you could do with my, you could do with minus S capital V uh, on a range on a specific IP or a subnet. I hope this video was helpful to you. Have a great day. Bye.